Uh, right, I'm going to start answering some of these questions, or I'm going to forget them. Uh, first of all, I think the BBC is better because it has competition. So the argument is, how do you preserve that competition? It goes back to commercial innovation. Uh, as the other questioner pointed out, a lot of uh, commercial media companies have innovated. Uh, now, at the risk uh, of uh, obviously playing to uh, David's prejudices, I will say, for example, that Sky continues to innovate. It uh, innovates with 3D, innovated with high definition, it innovated with 24-hour news, it's innovated with two arts channels. Uh, I think it continues to innovate. Uh, I think ITV innovates potentially in the content of some of its programmes. So I think it's important that the BBC doesn't, uh, you know, that those commercial competitors add to the BBC and the BBC adds to commercial competitors. It's a complex ecology and I think we need to create some competitive, uh, there needs to be competition. Now you can have uh, arguments sort of reductio ad absurdum. You could say that the only way to make the BBC better is to double the size of the licence fee or triple the size of the licence fee. These arguments get us absolutely uh, nowhere. I'm just talking about a principle that the BBC should be aware of its impact on its competitors and that is part, should be part of its thinking. It's not a revolutionary point that I'm making. It's a very straightforward point. And as far as the BBC Trust is concerned, if I said uh, that we were announcing a policy that Sky would have uh, a regulator called the Sky Trust, uh, which would be both cheerleader for Sky and regulate Sky services, I think people would go absolutely nuts about that and say, well, clearly, this organisation is not. Now, it may do, then do a fantastic job and regulate Sky absolutely brilliantly, but people would say, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. These people, they've just gone on television to tell us how marvellous Sky's services are. How can we believe that they're regulating properly? So it's simply a matter of corporate governance, in my view, but you can argue if the BC Trust is doing a fine job, let's not touch it. Uh, worldwide, again, I think the, the whole debate about worldwide is a good example of how the media distorts the issues. Uh, the, the issue with worldwide is very straightforward. Worldwide is a, effectively the commercial arm of the BBC. It makes money for the BBC and therefore for the licence fee payer, about mm. £500 million pounds a year, by selling BBC programmes all over the world and BBC products, merchandising, it's called, that vulgar commercial activity where you take the brand and make money by making toy Daleks. Uh, and... Uh, it's not, uh, the BBC is saying we should privatise worldwide, or the BBC is basically saying we should sell part of worldwide to make some money to capitalise worldwide in order to make worldwide much bigger. And certain commercial rivals, particularly independent production companies, who are organisations who have benefited both from the BBC and other media channels, and who we should also be very proud of. We've got one of the biggest and strongest and most vibrant independent sector uh, television uh, companies in the world uh, are concerned that a semi-private BBC Worldwide would effectively become a global distributor of all programmes and could potentially affect them. So again, competition comes into it. Now, we've had a very sophisticated, I think, an interesting debate about the future of the BBC. It's been nuanced uh, and subtle, and therefore I'm not going to ask, answer the question about thought for the day because the way that the media works, the only thing that would come out of this hour-long debate, is my, certainly from what I'm saying, is my view on whether thought for the day should, be, should have humanist or atheist people on it. But personally, I think it should. <laughs> I actually thought for the day should have agnostics on it as well, saying, well, I don't bloody know. <laughs> the whole thing gets me down. Um, um, I think the important thing to emphasise about thought for the day is you don't have to listen to it. <laughs> That's my thought for the day. Um, um, I, I think the, sort of the, the main sort of criticism of my point of view came from that gentleman who was I, I, talking about the impartiality of the BBC. I, obvi I don't know about the event he was trying to That's publicise. because the BBC never broadcast it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, indeed. Uh, and, uh, I, I, you know, I, I can't... Uh, I think the term is, I can't comment on specific cases. Um, which, uh, I think if I, politics, if, I was a G, if I was a GP, I think I'd say that all the time. Uh, um, uh, but yes, I, so I, you know, I don't know, maybe they, maybe they were unfair, maybe they weren't. But my experience of working in the BBC is that they bend over backwards, by which I'm saying, annoy the hell out of me, saying, oh, you've slagged off a Labour guy, you've got to slag off a Tory, now you've got to slag off a Lib Dem, and then you've got to slightly slag off someone from UKIP. But anyway... <laughs> 
and, and all I want to do is slag off people from UKIP all the time. Um, so, but you know, genuinely, there are there are a lot of people in who who are extremely anal about that, and obviously sometimes they slip up. But but there's you know there, there are people who are very aware of it, and and to the extent that it affects comedy shows, particularly in the run up to an election. Um, uh, but obviously, occasionally something will go wrong. I, I don't. I, similarly, the bias in the BBC in favour of the government from '97 to 2001. You know, I don't know. I dare say they were trying not to be. But uh, you know, the, the country was very enthusiastic about the government after the '97 election. Um, in a way, I was sort of thinking, nah, the uh, present company accepted. They're all the same politicians. <laughs> um, uh, but I certainly feel that there was a horrible. A horrible attack on the BBC by uh, um, Alistair Campbell at the time because they were doing something he didn't like and essentially because of a report that turned out to be substantially true and uh, you know I think that's that's disgraceful that they're attacking a, and seriously damaging we, the BBC still feels the damage of that attack a valuable institution basically to cover a government's ass for having started an unpopular war um, so yeah, that's horrible, but that's one of the many reasons why I'm very nervous of politicians of whatever stamp having too much hands-on authority over the BBC. And to be fair, Ed has also said that he's against that. So you know, that, I think that's a really important thing to uh, you know to try and maintain um, and in ensure into the future. Um, I can't think what else was there. Making them worldwide. Worldwide, oh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I think you know. I, I, on one level, I sort of think if it's a profit-making organisation, then, then surely that takes money, uh, you know, makes the licence fee effectively cheaper or stop it, stops it going up. Um, and I think BBC Worldwide does some, you know, fantastic things. But I, I, I suppose I accept the argument that it shouldn't be allowed to take over and shouldn't become the main thing the BBC is about because it is, while all its profits go to. You know, subsidise the main part of the BBC. It does act entirely as a commercial company, and I think that's fine to a certain extent. But if it became, you know, the size of um, News International or Denmark, um, <laughs> then uh, then I think that would probably be going too far. But that's it's a question of degree. Um, yeah. Innovation. Innovation. Oh, why aren't the commercial <laughs> channels innovating? Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, I think I think the I think the sign I think. I think the main reason is that the commercial channels and the, the media in general are going through crisis. I think the, the, the sort of twin impact of recession and uh, the internet has, uh, you know, is causing huge problems. And my overall response to that is, aren't we lucky that we've got the BBC to stop our media utterly collapsing? The counter argument is the BBC's presence makes it even harder on the uh, competing media, but I'm sure whatever the, the reason, if there is, as you perceive, less innovation in the commercial media, is because they've got less money, they've got less, they're, they're under a lot of pressure. They're trying, as I think people are in all sorts of media, in film, in books, that they're, they're trying to fall back on old hits and sort of reheat old ideas. Um, the existence of the BBC means that as an institution that that is. Uh, financially secure enough that it can continue to innovate and I think has been doing so. The irony for it is that sometimes it innovates so successfully that its competitors then want it destroyed. <laughs>